Welcome to week three, Business Analysis Techniques. This is your online instructor, Diana Block, and this is week three, spring 2014 quarter. So I wanted to go over with you the expectations and requirements for week three. And as you can see, this is your course content in Blackboard. And the assignment for week three is to read chapter three in the textbook and I do have attached here the chapter 3 PowerPoint. Um, when you get to the discussion you're going to discuss the decision-making steps as they apply to a decision you've made in the past. So the decision-making steps are in your textbook on page 70 list the six steps of the decision-making process. So you'll discuss how these steps apply to a decision you've made in the past and possibly if you wish you had paid more attention to any specific step, if there was a step that you missed or should have put more emphasis on, or if you have made would have made a different decision had you followed these steps. So we're just going to discuss the decision making steps and how you've used them in the past. Then you've got an assignment here and here is that worksheet. So the assignment you're going to work on after you've read chapter 3 and gone through the PowerPoints and once you've done that, you will know that the Maximax decision that they're asking for in 1A is the optimistic decision. And so on page 72, you'll read about Maximax and you'll understand from that information on that page how to calculate the Maximax decision. So you'll use the information given here on this table to calculate that. And you'll actually state which type of station is the Maximax decision. So you're going to say here, after you do the calculations, you're going to say for A, the Maximax decision is small, large, medium, or, or very large station. So you're going to give the actual station size that would be the Maximax decision. Then you're going to calculate the Maximin decision, or what we call the pessimistic decision. And page 73 tells you how to calculate that. So you'll do the calculations up here using the information we have and then you will state what the max and min decision would be. You'll also calculate the equally likely decision. You'll find that calculation on page 4. or I'm sorry, page 74 is where you'll find the instructions for calculating the equally likely decision. And you'll the criterion of realism decision is what we also call the weighted average. And that uh, is in page 73, where it tells you how to calculate that. So with all four of these on problem one, you're going to do some calculations up here and then state what station size then would be the uh, choice for that type of decision. So then in problem two, you're going to calculate expected monetary value, or what we call EMV. And page 76 in your chapter 3 tells you how to calculate EMV, so you'll do that using the information you have here. And then you'll determine which is the optimal decision based on which one has the highest expected monetary value. 2B is the EVWPI calculation the expected value with perfect information and that's on page 77 tells you how to calculate that so you'll calculate that using the information here and then see what the best decision would be under EVWPI. Problem 3 here you're going to calculate utility values. Utility values are later in the chapter uh, pages 91 and 92 is where that focus is and so you'll use this chart that's given and fill in the utility values here in part A and then in part B you'll find the expected utility and the optimal decision so those calculations are explained on pages 91 and 92 then on problem 4 you're going to uh, complete this decision tree down here and you're going to go back to calculating EMVs, expected monetary values. Again, that's on pages 76 and 77 where you'll see that information. And you'll calculate the expected monetary value at various nodes in this tree. Now, what I'm going to suggest before you start on chapter, or problem 4, you need to have read the chapter, of course, and review the PowerPoints, but you'll also 
want to view this video example that's in the additional learning resources, this is going to help you a lot with problem four, the decision tree. So make sure you view this video before you start attempting problem four. And so those are the four problems on the homework or on the ass assignment for the week. So you'll complete chapter problem one, um, and that information is basically on pages 72 to 74. Problem 2 is on pages 76 and 77. And then problem 3 is 91, pages 91 to 92. Then on problem 4, it's actually the EMV information on page 76, but also on this video in the additional learning resources. Um, so that's the information on how you'll complete the homework. I told you what you'll do talking about in the discussion. As you have time, I also suggest that you use your iPad to visit this textbook website and complete the practice quizzes. In week six, we are going to have a quiz and um, the reviewing the textbook quizzes will help you to get prepared for that because it's going to be a mid-quarter quiz. It's going to cover all the learning we've done from weeks one all the way through week five. So as you have time each week, I encourage you to go to the textbook website and complete some of the practice quizzes to get ready for the quiz that we will have in class later on in week six. So if you have any additional questions, my phone number, email address, and contact information, office hours is all in the instructor area. And as always, your emails and phone calls will be returned within 24 hours, usually in much faster than that if it's during the day. I'm always at my computer. And so if you have any questions, I look forward to hearing from you, and we will talk again very soon.